Up next, we have Justin Reisner. Uh, hopefully not overshadowed by this train. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Justin first. Justin has an English degree from Wright State University. He got his BA in 2012 and just got his master's last year. Congratulations, Justin. Come on up. except for the jerseys. These were, at the time, uh, made out of a thick wool. Uh, modern jerseys are made more with a mesh-like material. And the helmets they used, when they used them, were made of uh, leather and felt that was soft enough to fold up and put in your pocket. It was also very hot, so players would often just do without them entirely. So, triangles kind of got started in Dayton uh, through several uh, semi-pro, amateur, what are known as sandlot teams that played throughout Dayton. You can see some of them there. They were mentioned several times in the Dayton Daily News of that time period. So they went by a bunch of different names. Unfortunately, where they played, uh, the particular sites, the parks, uh, generally no, no longer in existence. The Triangles trace their origins to uh, the 1912 St. Mary's Cadets basketball team. Uh, St. Mary's now known as University of Dayton. When they graduated, they formed a football team in 1913 by the same name. A little while later, they changed the gym cadets and then the triangles a little while later. Now, uh, F.B. McNabb, a Delco patent attorney, uh, decided to organize a recreational football team uh, for his, uh, the employees at Dayton Metal Products and a couple other places. He hired Carl Scummy Stork uh, to help him get it organized. He was among the first to recognize the possibility of the uh, future NFL. This handsome fellow was the first uh, person to kick an extra point in an NFL game here at Triangle Park. Said uh, he would uh, end up being the future Montgomery County Sheriff after he retired. He got his unusual nickname after he was injured in practice, which caused him to hobble. So his teammates started calling him Hobby. This other fellow, Lou Partlow, uh, scored the very first touchdown in NFL history again here at Triangle Park. He had an unusual training regimen. He would uh, run through a wooded area near his home on the Mi Miami uh, River trying to practice uh, finding holes in opposing defenses, and he would toughen his shoulder by deliberately crashing into trees. <laughs> Unfortunately, it wasn't to last. Um, since the Triangle stuck to recruiting exclusively homegrown talent, while other pro football teams uh, recruited top collegiate talent. So it, they had a very hard time competing, and their last winning season was in 19, 19, 1922. So, they had a very hard time filling Triangle Park. It could hold about 5,000 seats, so they had to do a lot more traveling. Even at, though the admission price was cut down to a dollar. Top teams wouldn't want to come to Dayton because they knew they could make more money at home games. And this is a cover of a program from a uh, time the Triangles played the Green Bay Packers, you might have heard of. <laughs> However, one bright spot came in 1927, even though most of the original players have since left. This fellow, uh, Walter Sneeze I Chew, it should be fairly obvious where his nickname came from. Uh, he played halfback for UD for a few years and ended up being the first uh, NFL player of East Asia descent. So, unfortunately, it came to an end as the 20s ended. The Triangle's final season was 1929, which they didn't win a single game. In 1930, the franchise was sold to some businessmen from Brooklyn. They renamed the franchise the Dodgers. 
there wasn't much mention of its passing in the newspapers of the day. So now I'll talk to you a bit about where they played, which you might not be familiar with. So uh, two very familiar names, Edward Deese and Charles Kettering, purchased the plot of land that Triangle Park sits on was uh, for recreational use by their factory employees in 1916. And here's where it is. The circle represents where Triangle Park is right now. The arrows point to, uh, on the far side, North Main Street and I-75 respectively. So that gives you a little idea of where it is. It's at the meeting place of the Stillwater and Great Miami Rivers. So it's fairly easy to see how it got its name. This is Triangle Park today. I took both of these photographs myself. Uh, this is a, the sign you'll see if you go there today. Um, it's owned by the city of Dayton at the moment. The marker you see on, in the other photo is the only real mention of you know, the football history that took place there. So as I said, it had a capacity of around 5,000 people. and was recognized by the NFL as the site of the first NFL game on October 3rd, 1920. It was called the American Professional Football Conference at that time. In the game, the Triangles shut out the Columbus Panhandles, 14 to nothing. The exact site where those games took place is actually now a very nice baseball field. I found that many Dayton natives, including myself, know absolutely nothing about the Dayton Triangles, and I have a few ideas as to why. I feel that it's been kind of overshadowed by the big local history story in Dayton, the Wright Brothers. You might have heard of them. Uh, there also isn't a whole lot of mention about them in local museums and historic sites. Here's some more pictures of Triangle Park today. What you see on the left is Howell Field. It was recently renovated a couple of years ago, uh, partially with funds from the Reds Community Fund. The other picture I took was at Triangle Park. Unfortunately, there's some, Triangle Park has gotten a bit of a reputation for being a home of a lot of lewd activity, so. <laughs> but, so I, I thank you and uh, I hope you'll uh, 